Hello and welcome. This is James from the DSO Imager channel. Uh, tonight I'm going to show you the process and workflow I used on a recent capture. This is going to be the Cygnus wall, also known uh, as uh, a piece of the North American Nebula or NGC 7000. Now to capture this target I used my small refracting telescope, the 65 PHQ. That is a 65 millimeter uh, telescope with a focal length of 416 uh, millimeters and uh, f ratio of f6. For the camera, I use a ZWO ASI 533 MC Pro, and uh, the mount was a Celestron AVX. As far as the filter goes, I just use an Optolong luminance filter just for the uh, UV IR cut duties. And uh, total integration time on this is a little bit over 22 hours. So we have 448 subframes of three minutes each. Uh, the gain I had was gain zero. Oh, uh, and I am in Bortle 5 skies, and all the subframes are captured with little or no moon. I think there's a little bit of a moon in some of them, but I tried very hard to make sure I only capture data without the moon. All right, so let's start this up. What you're seeing here is the uh, stacked, the final stacked. This is unprocessed. This is using a unlinked uh, STF stretch. Uh, now I did drizzle. This is 2x drizzle. Uh, here's a copy of it without the drizzle. And I decided to show what the non-drizzle looks like. So the question came up in the comments in a previous video as to why I was doing the, the drizzling. And I'm going to show you right now. So if I zoom in, you know, the stars look pretty good. If I zoom in to the same area with the non-drizzled, I mean, these don't look too bad, but you can definitely see more blockiness, right? So. I mean, a star like this, it's not that big a deal. However, look at these smaller stars. See how blocky these are? If we go to where you have these tiny stars, it's, uh, it's quite noticeable. And you're going to see it here in a few minutes, but when I use Blur Exterminator, I mean, these stars get reduced down to just a couple of pixels. And so uh, that's why I decided to go with uh, Jizzle Data. It had nothing to do with the detail, although I guess if we take a quick look here, we can maybe see. I mean, it's not too big of a difference, but it definitely looks a little bit more detailed. Now, drizzling, you do take a hit in the signal to noise ratio, but I think once you hit a certain threshold, it's not too bad. All right, so anyway, first thing I did was run dynamic background extraction, and this is what we got with dynamic background extraction. Now, next, I got into uh, the color calibration, and I tried it a couple of different ways, and, um, well, you'll see. So I did use SPCC for this version, and again, this is an unlinked auto stretch. You can see that this is the uh, preview that I used to... Um, use as a background reference and what it came out with was a very red image. I also tried using linear fit for color calibration uh, like I had done in a uh, previous shot I did of the Cygnus region and this is what it looked like with linear fit. Now to clarify all I'm doing when I say linear fit is I'm splitting uh, I split this one into the individual RGB channels just by hitting this button right here. You do that and the result is this, right? So there's blue and red and green. And then what I did is I used the linear fit tool. You should still see the blue in there. Yep, so I used blue as a reference and I just applied it to the green and red channel and then combined in the LRGB combination tool. And once you do that, you do not need to have the uh, channels unlinked. 
So you lock the channels and this is what you get. Same with SPCC once the color, color correction is done. Uh, this is what you get. Now I think this one is perhaps more color accurate but you know I gotta tell you I actually felt like I could get more uh, out of this here. All right? I mean this area up here there's a lot of O3 and it kinda looks like any O3 signal that that's in there is kinda drowned out with the HA in this. So I played around with a couple of different uh, I did a linear fit and then applied SPCC but you can see it, it had almost no difference this looks pretty much the same and uh, this is linear fit and then applying background neutralization so I mean not big difference here but uh, it did clean up Oops. it did kinda clean up some of this in here I thought let's see Yeah, so, so the only difference between these two is that a background neutralization was applied to this. And I thought that we have a little bit better contrast in here possibly versus this one. So I had a choice to make and I decided to run with this one. Now I'm, I'm tempted to maybe go back and process uh, this SPCC version at some point but uh, I haven't done that yet so anyway I moved forward with this one here just to see how things would turn out all right so next was to run blur exterminator and this is what it looks like with blur exterminator so this is just this here with blur exterminator applied and you can see a huge difference in the stars uh, and it even helped uh, with the nebulosity yeah I mean it definitely looks a little bit wispier so yeah Blur Exterminator are doing a fantastic job here and just to compare uh, this is the non-drizzled with blur exterminator applied. I just wanted to sh show, you see what these stars look like here, these really little stars here? I mean they're just, <laughs> I mean what do we got? Nine pixels? Six pixels? <laughs> I mean if I could zoom in and count the pixels then uh, you know it's just <laughs> it's just not it's not good enough. You can see here how far I can zoom in and even these smaller smallest stars you know they still look round so that's the main reason I did the drizzle I mean does it does it matter well it matters to me because I'm going to be uh, pixel peeping <laughs> so anyway all right so after blur exterminator we remove the stars and uh, yeah, there we go. So I mean, already this is <laughs> this is looking kind of cool without the stars. Um, I was pretty impressed with how much detail I got with uh, with this little scope in the uh, dark nebula parts. All right, and this is after doing uh, some stretching. All right, so let me roll back the clock. I had forgotten to rewind the steps on that. So here we are unstretched. Uh, and I did use the generalized hyperbolic stretch tool for this. So this is the initial stretch. And then a little bit more uh, work. I think I it took about three stretches there. Uh, you see this difference here? Uh, this is where I'm using the... Um, Protecting the highlights uh, slider bar and increasing the, um, um, uh, what is it, pull it up, uh, the local intensity, right. And uh, this, is, this is where I ended up with the stretch. So 
it, this tool is really quite interesting. A, a lot of stuff that I used to do with curves, I'm finding that I can get a lot of that knocked out on the initial stretch with uh, generalized hyperbolic stretch tools. So pretty interesting that I was able to get here a lot quicker uh, than doing that first initial stretch and then messing around with curves. And in fact, what I did uh, it, when I got to this point after the initial stretch, I actually went straight into Photoshop and did a little bit of um, tweaking with the uh, camera raw, uh, raw filter. Uh, so here's one version of it and here's the other version of it. So this is definitely turning into a cooler uh, or a colder version of this, right? Because we have all this blue and purple in here now. Um, instead of all the reds. Now, I do decide to try to move the purple and this blue closer towards green. Uh, the green will uh, lessen the, the purple, de-emphasize the purple, if you will. And, I mean, oh, in my thinking, O3 is a kind of a green color. And so I'm wanting to uh, move this bluish to a more natural uh, green color. I mean, it's, it's a little weird how this is coming out because this is broadband. Uh, but it, the way I'm processing it, it almost felt like kind of like narrowband. But, I mean, I wasn't aiming to do anything weird with this. I think, I think really what set me on this path was uh, using linear fit for the color calibration. All right, so this is about 90% of the way. From, from here on out, it's mostly uh, tweaks, definitely getting into some curves work now. Um, you can see that I'm slowly, well, yeah, OK, I did some major work on the Cygnus wall itself. I wanted the wall to stand out. Uh, so here you can see a color mask uh, that I created using the new uh, color color mod Let me pull that up really quick yeah I mean this made it so easy to, to get the color mask that wanted to that the more accurate color masks <laughs> tripping over my words here uh, but anyway so you can see that this is a mask and it was very accurately able to highlight the area that I wanted to work on and all I'm doing in here is uh, I did a couple things. Uh, I did adjust. Uh, I wanted to increase contrast, and I wanted to actually increase sharpness just in the um, Cygnus wall. And so, blur exterminate. Excuse me, noise exterminator had already been applied at this stage, and noise exterminator does have a sharpening effect. But sometimes noise exterminator, if you really go aggressive, especially on these um, wider field shots. Uh, it starts to, it's the details start to break down if you zoom in too much, especially in this area here. So I find a combination of using noise exterminator and um, unsharp mask uh, does a pretty good job. So I'm um, conv convolution unsharp mask, and just using this. So anyway, yeah, I'll zoom in and get a better look at how this is going. Now you can see more curves work, and this is where I ended up. So I mean, it's pretty good. I mean, for a little 65 millimeter scope, uh, image circle, uh, excuse me, the um, image scale is 1.88, 1.86 arc seconds. So this isn't like high resolution here, but I thought, I thought what I got here was pretty good. Now, I did have some stuff to work on. I mean, I, this was pretty close to where I wanted to be, but uh, after I had done an initial adding the stars, right? So this is one of the first shots. I noticed that I had a problem here, All right? So when I removed the stars, this was a really bright star, and we got a bit of a halo left over, and that's not the only one. We got one over here. There's one over here, I think, yep, there was one over here on the edge. So I need to go back and um, take care of those. Yeah, 
And I think it was with this one. No, actually what you're seeing is little tweaks. <laughs> the little little curves adjustment. Uh this is the one. Yeah. All right, right. Because you can see uh I got a preview box on this one. You see a mask is applied. Uh there's the mask. So I use the game script to create a mask that yeah, I'll reverse the mask, invert. That focused on this. And I made a mask for each spot. And uh, and all I did uh, was just using the curves tool, pulled back on blue a little bit and pulled back on saturation a little bit. And so if I forward to the next step, there it goes. So yeah, that's now the color is blended in pretty well on that one. And it's just for each one. All right, so moving on to the next one. And that one's gone. Moving on to the next one. That one's gone. Moving on to that one. There. The thing with these halos, I should have caught them earlier in the process, and uh, I think I probably could have made some adjustments in Blur Exterminator to reduce the halos, and maybe those wouldn't have been so bad. But by the time I discovered them, and I discovered them the first time I put the stars back on there, you know, there was no way I was <laughs> I was going to start all over, over from that spot. So I just had to use uh, the quick and dirty method of using mass to correct that. Now let's briefly talk about the stars. Uh, this area, uh, this target has a lot of stars in it. I mean, there's so many of these stars. And I think if the stars are nice and tight, uh, it actually adds a lot to the, uh, uh, to the image. And so I wanted to get as many of these really small, faint stars in there. Uh, the challenge, of course, is that these big stars uh, will get too big if you stretch your star image all the way to pull out the little stars. And so there was some give and take. I used masks uh, to kind of limit how much these big stars are stretching. And I think this is what I ended up with here. So you can see the big stars are under control and we got all these gold all these red and gold stars, yellow stars, that are in the upper part of the North American nebula. Uh, I did remove some green from the stars, not all of it, uh, and I also uh, boosted saturation on the stars quite a bit. All right, let's look at the final uh, product, and I actually have two. Uh, two different, slightly different versions. Uh, I'll kill that. And here we go. Okay, so this is where I ended up with. And uh, I think the one on the, actually, hold on. It's this one here. Yeah. All right. So I think the one on the right is the one that I'm going to go with. But uh, you can see there's a little bit less green on the one on the left. So I haven't fully decided which one it was going to be. Probably going to be on the right. But anyway, this is this is basically where where we are. So let me know what you guys think. Which version do you like more? Uh, and how do you think this came out? With that, uh, don't forget to uh, give this video a like. It really does help my channel out. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. And uh, with that, clear skies.